Today we're looking at a falchion, and I don't mean a 13th century medieval sword. We're actually looking at this Republic of Gamers falchion NX keyboard. The front of the box looks pretty good, but there is a lot of information on there with loads of different awards I've won in the past. There's also information about it working with Aura Sync, or it's got Aura Sync one way or the other. It's a 65% wireless mechanical gaming keyboard. It's got ROG NX brown switches in there, which is ultra tactile, if you're not sure what that means. And there's a few other bits of information on there. But otherwise, the front of the box looks really good, and the actual keyboard sort of glossed over, so it pops out from the actual box. On the back of the box, you've got an overview of the keyboard itself. It tells you about the 68 key layout. It tells you with per key RGB with the world's first wireless or a sync, blah, 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 blah. Combination function keys, all this, that, and the other information about a keyboard cover as a keyboard case as well. We'll take a look at that. Also mentions about three different types of switches. You've got your linear red, tactile brown and clicky blue i'm presuming you're able to get this in three different options and then it tells you about all the other information on there as well so inside the box we've got another box and inside that box you've got the keyboard which came in a nice fabric bag which has then got a piece of plastic over it to protect it i'm not sure why you need both but hey one's reusable one's not you've got a usb type a to USB type C connection there for you obviously charging it up or connect it to your PC or whatever. That's 1.8 meters long and it is braided as well. You've also got an adapter here to change the USB type A side to USB type C if you wish as well. That came in a plastic bag. Also, you've got some stickers here. So you've got black and it looks like a silver version of it. You've got manual, to be honest, I think should have been a QR code, if anything, because most of it's multilingual and it does tell you what keys to press to change things. But again, QR code probably been the way to go. And all this is just warranty information, multilingual. Again, QR code would have done for that. But otherwise, that's it. Right, let's have a look at the keyboard. But first of all, it's got a nice nifty case, sort of, so you can transport it easily back and forth. And that's actually built into the bottom, so it just slides out. So let me lift it up, there we go. And there you go, so you've got like a transparent case, which has got a hard shell on it, which will protect your keyboard. So you just slide that off, and then you put it over the top of your keyboard. The right way would probably help like that and that will then protect your keyboard when you are transporting it around so that's a pretty nifty idea and then obviously you can put it on the bottom of your keyboard when you get to where you want to go and put it in your case and hey presto that's what it looks like so it looks pretty good the only thing is is that little bit of plastic there is sort of rised up round or raised up round the edges so it might get in the way a little depending on how you like it also if you're using the plastic base there's no option on the bottom to adjust the height of the keyboard so it tilts so on the bottom of the keyboard it is quite stylish to be honest with you for a bottom of a keyboard something that you're probably not going to see often it does look a little bit better than just having a plain bottom on it you've got all your model numbers and stuff there you do have four anti-slip feet in the corners there there and there and then you've also got a riser at the back to rise it up so it's at a bit of a tilt bear in mind there's only a few millimeters on that to be honest so it's not going to make it tilted too much on the back of the keyboard, you've got three options, really. You've got your power button, which obviously, or should I say switch, which obviously turns the power on and off. You've got your charge connection there, which is USB type C. And then you've got your little wireless dongle, which obviously you need for it to communicate with your PC or laptop. The LED lights will stay on longer on the keyboard if you notice they turn off pretty quickly once you have got the wireless adapter plugged into a PC. But this little slot here is magnetic, so it saves you obviously losing the adapter. On the left hand side of the laptop, you do have a unique lighting bar, which not only does it tell you the actual battery level so as you can hear, see here we're at roughly about 40 percent on the battery you can also swipe your finger up to make the volume go up or down on your computer you can actually change this as well in the software to do other things like run macros or for shortcuts and stuff like that but i think it's pretty unique that you can actually do that rather than having a traditional wheel or a, a shortcut to basically make the volume go up and down 
Okay, so the key is a double shot key, so it's extra durable. It also allows the light to go through the actual key so you can actually see the actual like, numbers and letters and symbols light up on your keyboard. Now, they don't include any form of removal tools for taking the key caps off or anything like that, which I'm quite surprised actually, because usually on top end keyboards, especially mechanical ones, you usually get the removal tool, but they don't include one with this, but they do come off and you can swap them out if you wish and as you can see we do have the brown switches on here okay as you probably notice this is quite a short keyboard so you're missing the number pad off the side and you're also missing the f keys across the top so f1 to f12 and so forth obviously this makes it the 65 percent keyboard now you can still use those features and so forth all you do is hold the function key down and then press different buttons depending on what you want for example there's no scroll lock on here but if you hold function and press delete it equals scroll lock or if you hold the function key down and press control it, you get menu you get function key and p you get the print screen and so forth you also can turn volume up by function and y and u for volume up and down you can also do profiles as well by pressing function a s d f g h and so forth you can change lighting effects again by pressing function and the left and right buttons so depending on how you want it, as you can see, lots of different options on there for you. You can also do the lighting brightness as well. So you can go from 0, 25, 50, 75 and 100% by pressing up and down. So if you want the lights off, you can do, or you can have them all the way on. And so it's totally up to you. Obviously, you can do more controls through the software. Okay, so I've got the keyboard set up for a sound test. My microphone, which is this thing here, is exactly 20 centimeters away from the top row of keys. This is unedited, so you hear exactly how it is, and you'll also see, or should I say, hear background noises, as well as possibly my voice will sound a little bit different than the other recordings. But here we go, so let's just test the AWSD keys first. Spacebar. Enter, backspace, shift, and let's just type a sentence. There you go. So down to software. So the software you have to get from the manufacturer's website, which is Asus, Zeus, ROG, whatever you want to call them. But if you didn't know, ROG, Republic of Gamers, is an Asus or a Zeus brand, depending on how you want to pronounce it. But once you've installed the software and you've put your USB dongle into your PC or laptop, then you'll be greeted with a screen here where you can change settings. So first of all, we've got a little question mark on this screen. If you click that, it shows your current hotkeys. For example, if you press function and R, it plays the next track and so forth if you want to rebind any of these keys you just click on the key you want so if you wanted the escape key to do something else you just click the escape key go to the right hand side it says default so obviously escape or you could choose something else so multimedia launch an application open a website blah 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 even run a macro i'll run you through that in a few seconds how to do macros you've also got disable options on there so you can disable alt and f4 which is obviously for closing programs and you can even disable alt and tab Okay, this is the first time I've seen this pop up, so it says ensure your keyboard has been turned on and it is set to the RF 2.4 GHz mode. I'm guessing my keyboard's gone to sleep. There we go. So I'll just tap it again, it's come back on. So that gives you a rough idea how to change the keys. You've got touch panel, that's the bar on the side. You can again adjust that to do different things. So obviously swiping up is volume up and so forth. You can tap, it's volume up and so on. So you click on which one you want and again you can change it to do different things. Zoom, multimedia, open website, blah, blah, blah. So that's good. You've also got lighting. So you've got lots of different lighting options on here. You can change the brightness. You can have color single, double or random. You can choose the speed as well. And you've also got the Aura Creator there, which will let you go even further into advanced effects and different things if you're wanting to. Under power, shows you your battery level on there, tells you when warnings will come up, so when you got down to 20% and different things like that. So you've even got a power saving mode option as well. 
and you've got firmware updates, so it'll check to see if there's any updates for the software, what's built into the actual keyboard itself. Otherwise, if you want to set macros up, you just go to the left-hand side where there's a picture of a keyboard, and this is where you can swap between the keyboard, hopefully. Okay, you have to click off it first, a bit strange, and then you click on the keyboard, then click on macro, and then you can record or create your own macro. And if you want to go back to the keyboard, it's strange it doesn't let you click on there to swap. You have to click on something else and then back again. It'll let you click on the actual name of the keyboard there, and that's where you can alter everything again. Otherwise, this keyboard does everything it should on the tin. You've got lots of features on there with that side light bar, which does look quite unique and nice. You've also got the option of putting the plastic shroud over the top of the keyboard, which was on the base, to protect it if you are moving around a lot. Ideal if you do lots of, let's say, land parties as we used to call them in the day or you're just traveling away on work or you're going to parents uncles whatever on holiday and stuff like that and you want to take your laptop with you and you want to take the keyboard as well and you can protect it very well so i can't really say anything bad about this keyboard it does everything it should on the tin it's obviously wireless and RGB at the same time they do rate it over 400 hours on battery but bear in mind anything what says it's rated for that it's going to be when you turn all the lights off and all the features off and so forth so you probably find if you're using the battery flat out non-stop you'll probably be looking probably i'm guessing closer to 10 to 20 hours but you do have a usb type c cable there you can charge it up with ease otherwise that's about it and i would highly recommend this keyboard